Well, I've, all the years of teaching, I get so pissed off about the musical education system in the schools. And I mean, it's just a, it's a, it's a contagion of aberration, they call it. You know, it's like a yeah. disease that goes from one generation to the next. And, and it's not that people are evil or, or anything like that. It's just, it's just something that it's, it's a habitual kind of attitude that, that's, that permeates our whole field. And, and the next thing you know, it's like all the kids in the band room are just, they're like terrified about missing a note instead of just, you know, <laughs> loosening up and having a fun time. And what the hell is the big deal about missing notes? It's like, you know, it's Shakespearean to air is human, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, and that's, uh, we, like you're saying, societally, we kind of have developed this aversion to making mistakes or to, to failing. Uh, you know, the, the failure has, uh, it, it's a, it's a bad word. It's a four letter word. Um, but you know, th that's the only way you learn, you know, if you, if you never screw up, if you never lose, if you never fail, you really never learn. You know, the, the greatest lessons are from the things that we can't do. So uh, I think that, that that kind of mind shift is is critical. But the problem is it's like the it's the dark side of the habitual tendencies of the brain. The reason we have habits is to make it easier for us to do things. You know, that we save the processing capabilities, uh, you know, when something becomes habitual. We don't have to think about doing it. We just do it. And that's a great thing. But when, when the habits no longer serving us, then we become a slave to that dogma that we've created. And I think like with the, with the educational system, whether it be music or just education in general, uh, you know, what served us 10 years ago, let alone a hundred years ago, uh, no longer serves us in the same way. So I, I, I think the, the inability, the inflexibility, the unwillingness to look at something and say, is this really working? And if it's not working, if it's not giving me the results that I want or need, what do I need to do to change it? And be willing to embrace that change, not as something that thinking, oh, I was wrong then. No, you were getting the results then. You were right then. But things have changed. So you need to change to, to, uh, to meet the current needs. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, uh, I agree completely with you. And the other thing I it just came to mind while you were speaking was the book you sent me on the, on the mindful stuff, you know. And I quite often uh, talk to my students about things along those lines that you have three options, the future, the past, or now. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. You know, you know and both the future and the past are actually kind of what you could, we call them illusions mm -hmm. because they're not real. The only thing that's real is now. Like George Carlin used to do a funny thing. He says, there's a great moment in time I want to tell you about. It's just one of the most amazing. Oh, oh gee, there it went. Sorry. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, and uh, but I, I tell my students, like you have three options. And when you sit down and you're, you're practicing, for instance, what are you thinking about while you practice? I hope I don't miss a note because I have this thing next week and you're now, you're not in now. Right. You're in the future. Right. Or God, I sucked on this last week when I played this, you know, you mm -hmm. now you're in the past. And right. sometimes you bounce between the past and the future. Occasionally you pass through now for a split second while you put some valve oil on or some pink <laughs> or something. But, you know, yeah, yeah. for the most part, the, I think the average person when they sit down and practice an instrument is nowhere near the, the percentage of now that they get is like minimal. Yeah. And so, I, uh, you know, I really loved that book that you sent me. And as soon as, and Adolfo, uh, who you mentioned earlier, you know, he, he's like a son to me in a lot of ways, you know, he was here for dinner last night, as a matter of fact. Huh. And, um, but he, he, he saw that book and he says, oh, Jose, you know, he, I didn't realize he knew you and all that. But, but, but,